Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is Sketch Monkey here. Today, we're gonna have a look at the big Land Rover Defender. This is the 130. You have the 90, which looks super cool, too, or a little stumpy. You have the properly proportioned 110. Then you have this school bus variant, which is called the 130, which has this longer overhang in the back end. So what we're gonna do in this video is have a look at this design. I'm gonna let you know what I think about this design, what I thought of it when I first saw it, when it was first unveiled. We're gonna have a look at the front end design, the side, the rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this for a drive. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 Land Rover Defender First Edition 130. You have a three liter, six cylinder, putting out 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque, connected to an eight speed automatic transmission. You also get four wheel drive, obviously. Zero to 60 is done in six and a half seconds. Fuel economy comes in in 17 city, 21 highway. And the price for this one is $84,700. Starting with the front end design, I do like the styling, as I said, because I think this has a good connection to the original Defender. When this first came out, I was a little bit disappointed because I kind of wanted to see a uh, modernization of the old one, similar to what Ford did with the Bronco. But as time had moved on and I looked at this more in detail, I've had this for a week now, so I've been able to really go into detail on the design of this. I actually think this new style of the Defender works because, first of all, it sets it apart. It looks completely different than any other Land Rover out there. And it's almost like this modernization in a new style of the old Defender. And that's exactly what the designers wanted. They said, we don't just want to take the old style, put some new graphics and lights on it and make it almost like a retro design. They wanted to have the same spirit of the old one, but in a new type of styling. And I personally think that they did a great job with this design. Now, what's interesting here in the front end of this car is just how many air vents there are in this front end. First of all, we have these two up here, pretty normal, like a normal grill situation up top. But for a grill, it's rather small. So they decided to add a little bit more of cooling down here in the bumper. But in between these two, you have an additional vent section here, a slot that just goes into this section of the front end. And you also have different slots here, another perforated section around the uh, fog lights. And last but not least, there's also an air curtain all the way down here. So plenty of holes in the front end of the new Land Rover Defender. Now this exterior color is called the Fuji White, and I think it looks fantastic, specifically with the blacked out graphics that we have in the front end. For example, the housing for the headlights themselves and the headlights, they look super cool, not too aggressive. They just have this Defender confident look to them because it's not a clear circle. It cuts off in the top part. And then you have these rectangular or squarish indicator lights with a small LED framing around them. So the details in the headlights look beautiful. And again, I think that brings back some of that traditional look for Land Rover into a modern interpretation. In the middle here, you do have some uh, chrome piece with the Land Rover logo off center. So you have it to the right side. And of course, up top, you do have the Defender stamped out here on the top of the hood, looking really nice. Coming around to the side view of the new Defender, and this being the 130, you can see just how far the rear overhang is compared to the 110. If I were to pick one that has the most classic natural proportions, I'm gonna have to go with a 110. But what you gain with this is of course a lot more interior space, specifically back here in the rear. We do have a very crisp and sharp shoulder line that cuts through the entire car. And this chamfer then wraps around in the front end where you have the Defender stamped in the front. It goes on the same chamfer as we have right here. The wheels and tires, these are the 22 inch wheels and you do have 275 millimeter wide tires all around this car. These are 22s. They look more to me like 20s. I thought they were the 20s for a long time until I looked at it and saw that they're actually 22s. It's all because of the size of this car that makes the rim size shrink a little bit. One graphic detail that I'm not so sure about in the side view is you see this piece right here being silver. I'm not sure I want to have this be in silver. I probably would want to have this all in the front end because it wraps around here. I think I want to have this be black and also black around this area right here. Here. We do have a functional air vent in this side and it's pretty 
massive, this piece. I do think it suits this car to have some sort of graphics here because everything else on the car is so smooth, the surfacing of it. And one interesting detail, if you look at this A-pillar, it's cut off by two black lines at the top and the bottom, making the A-pillar look like it's an island here just floating in all of this black space. I love the surfacing of this car because it is boxy, but at the same time within this boxiness, you have a lot of fluid motions. Just have a look at the integration. You can't really see it that well in this white color, but if this were a little bit darker, maybe some gray color, you would definitely see just how beautifully integrated this fender is and in the rear as well into the overall shape of this car. Now coming around to the rear end of the 2023 Defender, you can see just how clear cut this rear is. It's like they took a sword and just cut it off right here in the back because have a look at this line that goes right here and this is the end point of the length of the car and uh, Land Rover designers just said that we're just going to end it here and then start making the graphics within this cut line. You can see that these uh, indicators that we have in the front end, they come back here with this LED going around it and then you have the red indicator in this case. You also have the same, the same layout as these indicators. They then scaled those up and those became the main taillights of the rear end within this black graphic. Now, as I said before in the video, I do think that the 130 has some pretty weird proportions to it. It feels almost like a school bus with the rear end sticking out so far. But as I said also, I do like the graphics that goes on here. And these graphics in the back are, of course, the exact same ones you're going to get on the 110 and the 90 as well with this black panel wrapping around the entire greenhouse and then further sticking down into the taillights like we talked about. You also have a full spare size tire within this case. I do like that the Defender is stamped onto the casing itself looking nice and you have the same finish here as the body color is itself. So the case is Fuji white as well. Moving further down, you do have a proper bumper down here that is all metal and you have the tow hooks. You can also barely see the dual exhaust pipe sticking out in the rear end. Looking at the Defender from a straight rear view as you're doing right now, there's no way of telling if this is the 130, 110 or 90 because they all look the same in the rear. But what Land Rover was able to do is to create something truly unique not just in the proportions of the specifically 130, but also with the graphics. There is no way, there is no other car that has this type of layout, this clean cut in the rear with the graphics looking like this than the Land Rover Defender. So this makes for a very original and unique design. And I actually think that this is going to become a more and more beautiful design over time as we get to know this and just realize how special this design actually is. Welcome to the very industrial interior of the 2023 Land Rover Defender. Just have a look at this uh, dashboard. It has all these holes in it. You have this big shelf and also, of course, Defender stamped into the background of this uh, surface. Very industrial, almost militaristic style. So let's fire this up and let me show you the gauge cluster and the infotainment screen. We have an 11.4 uh, size infotainment screen here. Look at the integration. It feels like it's just floating in between these two bars. So looking pretty cool. I don't mind this integration at all because it doesn't stick up anything above this top piece of the dashboard. Up top, we do have two very easily adjustable vents, and this is all soft touch material here with this leather wrapped around it and the gray stitching coming back all over this interior. But let's have a look at this uh, uh, infotainment screen and what you can do. So you can go into all the cameras and check out the camera settings, which are super cool for this car. You can toggle around it in a 3D view and see exactly where it is you want the camera to point. And if you don't know how to get to that view, all you got to do is just click on the camera itself on this little 360 view, top view, and it will show you exactly where it's pointing at. So all four corners, all wheels have their separate camera angle, which is perfect if you go off-road and want to avoid the biggest obstacles. And that's not all when it comes to cameras. You also have the off-road cameras, which show you the suspension and how much the suspensions are working in each corners. But the coolest view is the X-ray view, which is going to show you what's underneath the car as you move forward it reads what's under in front of the car and then feeds that video into the screen showing you what's underneath the front end itself super cool setup for the camera systems and last but not least you do have the towing 
cameras. Is it really easy to just hook up a trailer and make sure everything is connected properly? If we go into the native navigation system, it's pretty responsive and pretty easily laid out. There's not some crazy graphics in this map, but that's not really what you need. And you can also, of course, plug in your phone, use Android Auto and or Apple CarPlay with this system. Very nicely done. Now you do have the climate control settings down here, but you can also go into this setting and here you have the fan where you want the fan to blow out from front or rear super easily adjustable but this is not something that I would probably ever use since we have all those same settings in this control panel right here in the middle one cool feature about this climate control if you go into air quality you can see the type of air quality that comes into the cabin it is all color graded so you have green for good air quality and if it's really bad hazardous it turns into red particles that kind of flows into the car in this animation super cool feature Moving further down, you do have the climate control buttons here. You have two dials for the temperature. And if you want to change the seat settings, for example, heated and cool seats, you just press the same dial and it changes function. So now you have the heated and cool seats in three different settings. And if you want to change the fan speed, for example, you press this button down here and now the right dial turns into the fan speed controls. Super easy because what this does is it implements several functions into less amount of buttons because you're using the same buttons and dials to change a bunch of different things. I think it's a really cool idea. You have the hill descent control button here as well, the on and off for the auto shut off, the defroster button. You have the ride height controls here as well. So you can raise and lower this car. And to the very right, you do have the volume control, the volume knob right here with the start and stop button to the left. Looking at this gear selector, this feels almost minivan-like to have it up here. But I, again, I don't mind it. It looks pretty cool and it's very easily to, to just reach up, put it in reverse. You're gonna get the backup camera with the trajectory lines and the 360 view looking nice. Further down, you have two USB slots, one regular USB and one USB-C and a 12 volt cigarette outlet. Have a look at this sturdy industrial piece that goes around the cup holders and the uh, wireless charging. You can still see the nuts and bolts. Usually what car designers make with the interior, they want to hide as many nuts and bolts as possible. If you jump into a modern interior, you're rarely gonna see any sort of hardware in the interior, but not in the Defender. And I actually love that feature that we still have some industrial feel to this interior with this wood trim that goes around it. We didn't really talk about this uh, feature here. I do like this integration. I've never seen this before. You have some grab handles up top and down here you do have a big shelf where you can store whatever you want. And this also continues behind the infotainment screen into underneath the gauge cluster. So moving further back here, you do have two cup holders. You also have the wireless charging. This beautiful armrest that is in this white leather with the almost gray stitching. Underneath here you do have a pretty deep storage compartment but the coolest thing about this is that you have it it's cooled so you can have it in two different settings or two different temperatures if you want to have some cold stuff in here it almost becomes a little freezer which is super nice to have looking at these seats they look pretty normal to me there's not some over styling going on here they're very, very traditional looking seats they do have some pretty nice bolstering to them and of course they're both power adjustable for uh, the driver and the passenger you have this smooth leather on the outside with the perforated leather going on in the interior moving on to the steering wheel this to me feels almost this is almost the most industrial piece in this interior is the steering wheel because we have these spokes on the sides with the holes in them and this big chamfer it looks very simplistic but at the same time it also suits this specific car to have this type of design for the steering wheel and then you have the leather wrapped centerpiece with the defender in the interior on the right side you do have all the controls for the cruise control and you also have the heated seats on the left side you do have the voice command and the controls to customize the gauge cluster exactly as you want so you have a bunch of different settings here the display layout you can have it one dial two dials you can have the entire map you can have the media show there you can have it exactly like you want it and that's the whole point of having a full digital gauge cluster like this very nicely done as well because we do have a housing for it up top and it sits very deep you're not going to have any problems with glare 
in this case when it comes to the gauge cluster. Now this storage shelf here, it continues underneath the gauge cluster and then comes back on the left side of it. You also have a vent up here and further down you also have the parking brake right here to the left of the steering wheel. Looking up top you do have a digital rear view camera looking fantastic. You can adjust this up and down, zoom in and out and do whatever you want to have the perfect camera angle. Up top we do have a full size sunroof that goes all the way back to the uh, headrest of the second row and you also have a smaller sunroof for the third row so they get their exclusive little sunroof back there as well adding some exclusivity to the interior of this car and you can also fit back there that's the thing with this three row it's very spacious across all the rows in this car looking at the doors same industrial feel comes back in the doors we have the black and white and, and gray textures with some wood right here in the door handle itself on the passenger side but not in on the driver's side. So you have a different door handle on the driver's side than you have on the passenger side, which is very interesting to see. It's probably because the passengers don't really have a steering wheel to hold on to when you're going off road. So you're going to use that sturdy wooden grip that they have on the door over there. You have a Meridian sound system in this car and some storage in the bottom with the industrial look with the nuts and bolts being visible in the door panel itself. Last but not least, of course, this being a very practical Defender Land Rover, we do have a proper glove box. Let's jump back to the second row and let me show you just how well I fit behind my own driving position being 6'1". Have a look at this. It's plenty of space back here for me to sit and have all the leg room in the world and the headroom as well because you know this is a very boxy shape. The roof line doesn't really slope down so I have essentially the same headroom I have as the driver in the front end and that's why you get the 130 because you want more interior space. You have this pocket in front of you and you have four zone climate control here with very nice settings. Everything has a separate display for it. The fan speed and then you have the controls for the, for the temperature. You also have the heated and cooled seats back here. Very fancy. Same function as the front end. You just press the temperature button and that's going to give you the controls for the heated and cooled seats. Folding this center armrest down you are going to get two cup holders here that look pretty basic but they will get the job done of transporting your drinks. Now getting into the back seat is not the easiest because you don't have a lot of space but once you get back here it's actually not that bad when it comes to space in general. It looks pretty nice in here and I have a lot of space moving this backwards. I still have plenty of leg space and in addition to that if it gets a little chilly back here you do have heated seats in the third row but you don't get the cool seats like you have in the second and first row. Alrighty guys, setting off in the 2023 uh, Land Rover Defender 130. I have it in the off-road mode now because we're going over some rough terrain here in Red Rocks before we get out to the more smooth surface up there. I absolutely love these cameras. We have the uh, X-ray cameras. So I can see everything that goes on underneath the vehicle as I'm rolling. And if I want to switch camera view, I just have to press, press the 3D button looks like a video game this thing it's so nice the cool thing is that you can adjust the ride height as you drive which is very nice i now i'm now in normal height which is fine because we're coming out on a smoother surface than we was over there so what do we have under the hood we have a three liter uh, six cylinder uh, putting out 395 horsepower and 406 pound feet of torque it might sound uh, to me it sounds pretty perfect honestly the numbers itself and the driving of this, it is a big vehicle, but 395 horsepower, it does 0 to 60 in 6.5 seconds. All wheel drive, obviously, four wheel drive in this case with the locking diffs. And you also have an eight speed automatic. And together, I think all of this is the, a really good uh, drivetrain for this car. It's not too fast, it's just enough. And you don't really need any more than that. I've been driving this for a week now. And uh, my, my impressions of it is that it is very comfortable. You have all the drive modes so to get you out of any sort of situation. It's like eight, ten drive modes in here. So you're always gonna be able to pull yourself out of whatever situation you find yourself in. However, the thing I'm a little bit um, 
uh, hesitant about and something that I would personally probably switch out are these wheels. We have 22s on this. So if you want to take this off road, not the most optimal um, wheel setup, wheel and tire setup, since they are 22s. I would personally want to have some meatier, beefier tires, more some more off-road oriented tires and smaller wheel, wheel size, maybe 18s. I think that would look really good on this car as well. We're coming out to an empty road and let's step on it and let's see what this got. As I said, plenty of power in this car. And I, I don't think I even want it to be quicker than this because it doesn't really make sense. It's such a huge volume. So zero to six in 6.5 seconds is totally fine by me. It's interesting, I don't have a head up display in this car and head up displays are always, has always been something that I personally don't really care about that much. It doesn't matter to me because we do have in this case, very nice housing for the gauge cluster and the uh, gauge cluster itself is super crisp. And since it has the housing, you're not gonna have any problems with glare or anything like that. I think it sounds decent as well. It definitely sounds like a V6. Doesn't have too much of a growl to it. The V8 sounds absolutely fantastic in these. You can get this with a V8 uh, as well, of course. You can get it even in the small 90. That would be my dream Defender, would be the 90 in a very dark color with the V8 setup. But this V6 is totally fine. It sounds good, has plenty of power and torque, 406 pound-feet of torque, and it goes really well and smooth across the entire rev range. It is so smooth, this car. It's like the, the surface is not bad here, but even when you're going over some rougher surface uh, surfaces in, for example, downtown Denver, it's still very smooth, even with the 22-inch wheels, which is super impressive. And I also like this eight-speed gearbox. No problems there. Also very smooth transitions between the shifts, obviously. Just look at how beautiful it is out here. I love driving out here. I can just take any car out, take a break for an hour and go drive these roads. This gauge cluster is really cool. You can configure it as I showed you uh, in any way you want. So display layout, you can have one or two dials, something like this. I prefer to have it like this when you have two dials, then you have the uh, map right there in the middle. It's the most logical setup for me, I would say. It just feels right and it also feels pretty classic. Gearbox can be a little slow when it comes to downshifts when you're stepping on it if you want to overtake. And switching the drive modes, we do that right here. So now we're in gravel, grass, snow, mud rut, doesn't need that right now, sand, rock crawl, wade, and configurable. I like to keep it in comfort. It feels like the most natural setting to have this car in when you're just driving along like this. It's interesting though that it doesn't have a sport setting. I actually like that because not every single crossover SUV needs to have a sport setting. I mean, what's the point? It's a tall SUV. You don't need to have a sport setting in a Land Rover Defender and they decided not to have that here. This is a that's what I like about this car because it is a purpose-built off-roader. The only thing that uh, kind of doesn't really make sense is that we have these wheels and tires. Oh, look at this Viper coming. Beauty. Coming out on the highway here and I'm going to show you. Uh, let's see how quiet this is while doing 70, 75, something like that. It's a nice GTR over there. Looks like a drag race GTR. Probably a thousand horsepower in that thing. Here we go. And we're up to 60. Cruising in 70, you do hear a little bit of wind noise, but that is kind of to be expected because this is such a boxy shape. Even with the seven <laughs> intakes that we have, uh, events that we have in the front end, we still have some uh, wind noise, but it's totally fine. The road noise itself is not that uh, high is not uh, you know too uncomfortable or anything like that. It's a really great cruiser this car, and I also love that it's so capable off road. If you want to take it off road, just make sure you switch out these 22s before you think of doing that. What's my final verdict on this car, specifically on the design? As I said, this when it first came out, I thought it looked too much, too soft 
if you can believe that when you look at this boxy shape because I had the old Defender in my mind and I thought they were gonna modernize that but as the designer said uh, they didn't want to take it and re make a retro design retro modernized design of the old Defender they wanted to capture the spirit of the old Defender and apply it into a very modern and new design language for the Defender and I think they did a fantastic job because this doesn't look like any other Defender, uh, any other Land Rover, which have a pretty sleek design to them. The Range Rover, the, the Velar, and all of these other, the Evoque, the, the small one, they all have this very stylish look to it, but this ha still has that rugged look, a feel to it. And the power, I mean, the power is there. Six and a half seconds, zero to 60, close to 400 horsepower, 406 pound-feet of torque. 8-speed automatic. It's a, it's a good daily driver. I would personally not get it in a 130 because I'm not a huge fan of these proportions, specifically in the back end where it sticks out, the overhang is so long. If it was just me driving it, I would go for the Defender 90 with the V8. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.